Helen Keller writes vivid newspaper accounts of suffragette activity for the United Press, strongly supporting this and other social movements using her own best talent, words. The mechanics of writing are never easy for her. Anne Sullivan must read back to her every page she types. But publishers will buy Helen's writings, and she is the main support of the tiny literary household. She is unshaken when her campaign to prevent infant blindness caused by venereal disease evokes a furor. Her Frank Magazine article outrages the false morality of the day. The subject is taboo, but she has broken taboos before, and she feels she must speak out. Mr. and Mrs. John Doe are shocked, but more important, health authorities are grateful. Symptoms of success begin to appear. A ladies group called the Sunshine Society is formed. Its purpose, to break through the stigma of sin surrounding infant blindness, to rescue blind infants from underprivileged homes. Shielded from view in darkened cradles, these children were being denied the proper care, which would afford them a chance to grow into whole personalities. Increasing numbers of reassured and probably relieved parents cooperate. Springtime Washington, in the office of Harry Hopkins. The Works Progress Administration has established a project of making talking book machines for the blind. 5,000 of them have been made. And these talking books are available to the blind people of America through the lending libraries established by the Library of Congress. They may borrow these books in the same way that you borrow yours. It is the most comfortable way of reading that I know of and may well be envied by those of us who have sound sight. The person who suggested this project and is responsible for it is Miss Helen Keller, who is not only the outstanding sightless person in America, but one of the Republic's foremost citizens. Talking books are compact, and they bring pleasure to thousands in America, while in another country, books take on a different meaning. A ranting and hostile Joseph Goebbels finds books dangerous. They give men ideas, open men's eyes. A great honor for Helen Keller. Her own writings breathe too much of freedom for the Nazis. They, too, are burned, consigned to the flames which soon engulf the entire world. While Helen's campaign for the blind is finally bearing fruit, one of the more colorful American minorities is about to give high honor to another successful campaigner. President Calvin Coolidge will never be allowed to forget that he once truly was chief of state. Coolidge gives Helen Keller his personal check for the new foundation for the blind she is helping to form. And Mrs. Coolidge, a teacher of the deaf before her marriage, is anxious to lend her name to any effort that will assist deaf or blind persons. When she was only 12, Helen gave a tea party and raised $2,000 for the blind. Now she raises hundreds of thousands in a year. Her influence and friendships extend from the White House and the First Lady to the humblest tenement and the quiet blind. Famous or unknown, all are proud to know her. And by her side on every occasion, Anne Sullivan. It is not all work, to be sure. Helen has always been able to feel vibrations. And when the vibrations are from the violin of Yasha Heifetz, she feels at once sad, joyous, and lonely. Here she receives President Eisenhower's Committee to Employ the Handicapped Award, given by the blind Major General Melvin Moss, in the presence of two blind Girl Scouts, an example of participation in life by sightless persons made possible by her work. Assisted now by Mrs. Evelyn Side, who succeeded Polly Thompson upon her death, she meets her 10th U.S. president. With all of them, she has campaigned hard to improve the lives of disabled persons everywhere. At Washington, D.C.'s Gallaudet College, the world's only institution of higher learning for the deaf, Students are taught by sight how to pronounce words they cannot hear. As you watch these two, consider the difficulty of teaching a blind deaf person to speak. Persistence. Persistence. 
Look at my tongue. It's pressed gently against my teeth. Persistence. Predicting. Persistence spells success. Predicting. Weeks later comes the test. Good morning, Mr. Benjamin. Good morning, Carolyn. Nice beads. Thanks. You've been practicing. Yeah. Let's try your favorite sentence. Persistence spares success. Good. Persistence spares success. Let's look at it in the mirror. Success. 